<laughs> T says, Shane, well, I'm sure your friendship with Shawn Michaels means that you don't exactly consider him a buddy. I'm still curious as to your opinion on Paul Levesque as a person. From a distance, he seems like a good dude that had a passion for the business, but would like to get your perspective. Thank you. Yeah, I, I had far less uh, problem with, with Hunter. Um, Hunter seemed to me somebody that was uh, diligent and wanting to learn the business. Uh, he had When I went up there with Dean Douglas, he had come down to breakfast one morning. He had sketches of ideas that he had for robes and things for the Dean. Uh, and you know, I had less interaction with them. The problem was is that when you put the five of them together, they would all feed off each other. You know, and then, and, you know, became very much a wolf pack, you know, like Boomer. So if Sean doesn't like somebody or a hundred or a razor doesn't like somebody, that means we're after all work to get them. And, you know, noteworthy to say that two of those guys have since come to me and apologized and said, it's sort of to put it behind us. I'm, I'm wrong. Three Scott Hall did as well uh, before he passed. And, and I'm glad he did because the guy, I, I enjoyed being around razor and when he was the diamond stud, in WCW, he traveled with Johnny and I quite often. Uh, he, he, in a lot of ways, he's hilarious, you know, and he's fun to be around. But you know, when you're in a position where, like I mentioned earlier, the one converse in the one question, this is how we feed our family. And so, if you're doing things to undermine my ability to, uh, for instance, the, the day I showed you the right arm line, clothesline, second, yeah, you know, left arm line, uh, you know, the, the office is going to look at that, and you know. They're going to, you know, the click had the ear of the office. So they're going to say, well, let's put the heat on Shane, which is what uh, Tony Green and those guys would do. It didn't matter who screwed up in that match. If you were a click member, it was the other guy. And, uh, you know, I just, I found it completely unfair. I've always been a fair minded guy. I want treated like everybody else gets treated. And I don't want treated less than or more than the next person. I'm, I'm willing to go along with the same rules as everybody else. And, uh, you know, so obviously I pushed hard back against that. And I think because of that click mentality and that wolf pack mentality, when I did start the fire back, they tried to create this unified front that it was, you know, Shane and whatever else. And now we have the advent, like the old saying, it goes, it all comes out in the wash. Uh, we've had, what, 30 years now of people that have gone there and, and come out and you're hearing the almost identical story, you know, the same thing over and over and over again, just validating what those of us that said it earlier uh, said. So, uh, I, I have never had personal direct heat with Hunter or X Pac or Kevin Nash. Uh, it was just the, the other two. And like I said, Razor, to his betterment, more of a man because he came to me and he apologized for what had happened and, and wanted to put it behind. And, uh, you know, today, like I said, that ball's in Sean's court and it will remain in his court. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I just had to have this conversation with my youngest son recently over an incident in the football uh, uh, season where something happened that was, you know, a bit unfair to him. And I said, look, you just learn from it, you know, and turn it into, you know, use it as uh, to, to plug, you know, put a plug up your ass and piss you off to, to react to it. Fight harder the next time. Don't rely on. And and I, I, I do believe that. I, I, I have so much more respect for the guy that will come up to me and say, Shane, I have a problem with you and this is what it is. Let's sit down and talk about it then. You know, I'll tell you why I either said it or if I was wrong, I'll be the first to fess up and say I was wrong. But uh, I, conversely, I loathe people. Hey, James, how you doing? I'll sort of stick that knife in your back. If you don't like me, don't waste your time. I don't want to waste my time on people I don't like. Uh, if it's 150 years from now, that's that's a close enough for that grave. Uh, and I'm, I don't want to waste any time between now and 150 years from now. And to me, I consider it a vast waste of time to be talking to somebody uh, that's pretending or whatever. Just say your piece and then we'll walk us. I'll leave you alone. You leave me alone. No, no harm, no foul. But uh, uh, like I said, that bowl will be in Sean's court. And, uh, you know, I've since put all that stuff behind me. I mean, it's, it, you know, it, otherwise, like I told you, the exact words I told my own son, it's only going to eat you up. It requires exponentially more energy. And I say this as somebody who's who's practiced this for quite a while. Uh, you use up an extraordinary amount of energy in hating people and harboring ill will toward people, as it does going through and just smiling and saying hello to somebody, wishing somebody a nice day. One day, may, one way, one of those ways makes your day better, and one of them makes your day worse. And so you have to ask yourself what damage you're doing to them anyway. 
To quote the Travelling Wilburys, it's all right, remember to live and let live. Well, it's all right, the best you can do is forgive. I always like that line from that song, the end of the end of the yeah. line, Travelling Wilburys. Uh, just before we shut this down, you mentioned Triple H. He wasn't Triple H, then he was Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Paul Levesque. Yeah. He sketched some ideas for robes for you. This is completely new yeah. information. Why was he doing that? Or just off his own yeah. back, he thought he'd just do it for you? No, I, I think initially there was this thought, I, I, in large part because of my history with Sean and uh, Kevin and uh, Scott, that when I came there, if you remember the, the story from Montreal, when I went to walk into the dressing room, they, no, no, you dress with us. Uh, and we'd get up and have breakfast and go to the gym. But at, at this early point, remember, I'm on the road very, very little. You know, it's it, I, it was like two, two and a half months, maybe three, before the Dean went from that splash in, in Dayton, Ohio, or Akron, Ohio, on to Razor, to actually full-time on the road. There was a long span where the week, like every other weekend I was going to uh, Titan Towers and doing the uh, the vignettes and everything. They were taking the slow introduction to create this character. And it was during that time that Hunter brought those sketches down. Yeah. 